How often should I pray? It's a good practical question. We have to make those kinds of decisions about a lot of things. So I give a very simple answer. In fact, it's the same answer that St. Paul gives, and it's the same answer that Jesus gives. Don't ever stop praying. Pray without ceasing. Pray without growing weary. That's what Jesus and St. Paul say. Ceaseless prayer. We come to understand ceaseless prayer when we understand that prayer is a relationship. Prayer is about having a relationship with God. We should live our whole lives in reference to God. We should live our whole lives in that relationship. And that relationship involves holding up everything up to Him all the time. So whether I'm walking around, whether I'm speaking to an audience, whether I'm having my lunch, whether I'm engaged in a conference, whether I'm in the middle of work, whatever it is, we should always be at prayer. Prayer is being in relationship with God, most fundamentally. And that's the kind of prayer we often call a contemplative form of prayer. That's how the Catechism describes it. Pray without ceasing. St. Benedict gives us some sage advice in his rule when talking about how we come to pray without ceasing. In what could be called the key verse of the rule in chapter 20, he says, we know that God's presence is with us everywhere. That's really what praying without ceasing means, being aware of God's presence everywhere. Then he says, we should be especially convinced of this when we pray the divine office. And that he's referring to the prayer of the Psalms, the liturgical prayer that monks carry out many times a day, seven times a day and once in the night, as well as the Mass, that regular liturgical prayer throughout the day. So we see the need for punctuated moments of prayer. The Catechism says something similar. We can't pray always unless we pray at some specific times. So we need to have some specific times dedicated to prayer. And that will enable a prayer without ceasing. When we're setting aside some specific times for prayer, we want to mark the moments, the key moments of our day, similar to how we do that in other meaningful relationships. Marriage is always a good relationship to look at as an analogy to our relationship with God. And married couples often start the day together and end the day together and usually have some points of connection during the day. It's a good model for how we can also pray, to start the day with prayer, to end the day with prayer, and then have some points of connection during the day. Furthermore, having some time for more extended prayer, if all that married couples did was to wake up and say hi to each other, go their separate ways, text each other once or twice in the day, come home, wave at each other, give a kiss, hello, and then off to bed, it wouldn't be too much of a marriage. In order to deepen a relationship, there also needs to be extended periods of time. A lot of times married couples will have dinner together and take that extended period of time, take an hour for dinner and share about the day, speak about what's happening, maybe let that flow into some time in the evening. Married couples also have date nights and spend many hours together or take a day away together or even a week vacation together and the same applies in our relationship with God. It's good to take a significant time of, of silent prayer, of, of speaking from the heart, an open time where we can speak and we can listen, we can rest and we can be with God. So important to stretch out that time, I would say an hour every day. If you can't do an hour, try a half an hour. If that's too much, start with 15 minutes. And just taking a little bit of time with the sacred scripture, open up God's word. That's how he likes to speak to us. That's why he gave us his word. He likes to speak to us through the sacred scripture so we can open up his word, sit down with him, read, let him speak to our hearts, and then we speak from our hearts back to him. 15 minutes, a half an hour, an hour. 
If you have an adoration chapel, spend time in the adoration chapel, in the Eucharistic presence of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. It's a great form of prayer. In fact, even if you're married, go with your spouse. Or if you're married and you have children, it's hard to get away from the children, let your spouse take a shift. You one day, your spouse the next day. These are ways that we can make time for prayer, make God a priority. It's nice to say that we love God with all our mind and heart and soul and strength, as God commands us, but then if we don't actually make time concretely, what does that really mean? We need to make time for the Lord, time for that prayer, punctuated moments of prayer so that we can move into a place of praying without ceasing, which is the ultimate goal, as St. Paul tells us, as Jesus tells us. And even for those who are always at prayer, who have come into a very contemplative place living with the Lord, it's still good for us as much as we're able to, to have those punctuated times of prayer, special times away with our spouse as we live with him, Jesus Christ. I encourage you then, start today, start right now. In fact, why don't we just say a little prayer together. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.